or being the ballet master I was with the festival ballet, um, Donald Albury, so Donald Albury, who was the director, um, administrative director of the company and president, uh, decided we were going to do the Sleeping Beauty. I thought this was ridiculous because the Royal Ballet, which was the main big super company in the in the in England at that time, we were a very good company. But we were a touring company, and we had a different message to give. And so our repertoire was different. We tried to be very different from the Royal Ballet. But because the Royal Ballet did Sleeping Beauty, Margot von Gwyn's the epitome of Aurora, it seemed so odd that we would be doing Sleeping Beauty. Anyway, he asked several people if they would do it. They all turned it down because they thought it, they also thought it was a silly idea. But we were already selling tickets for this. It was already advertised. So we had about four weeks to go. And he came to me and said, Ben, you're the ballet master now. We have to scrape the bottom of the barrel. You're going to have to do this. Well, if I'd been told that now, I'd have been mortified more, I think. But at the time I thought, oh, that's, that's, that'd be nice. <laughs> Terrifying. And so I did all the petit bar choreography I could and then added things like I did a different carabosse. I wanted the carabosse to be beautiful like the other fairies. And um, the entrance of the fairies I changed, the garland dance, several things, the pas de carte in the last act instead of the pas de trois. So things I did, a few things different, but all the petit bar, uh, Corps de Ballet and Rosa d'Age, Pas de Dye, kept all of that. So it was really Ben Stevenson after Petit Bar. A lot after, actually. But anyway, the production went on and it was successful. I was surprised, but it was successful. So one afternoon, um, I was told that Margot Fontaine was at the matinee and she wanted me to go and sit with her. So I went out front and sat with her and she clapped in all the right places. I was quite pleased about that. And then she said, I've been asked to do Sleeping Beauty in Venice with this production. How would you feel about it if I did it? And I said, well, I think it'd be fabulous. So I was a bit worried about this because she was so sublime in the role. So she said to me, look, I want you to pretend I've never done Sleeping Beauty me before and tell me your ideas and what you want because it's I can't just do what I've always done although you the Rosa d'Age or Pas de Deux, that's the same the Pas de Deux in the vision scene the variation things are different and I'll learn all those things just tell me what you want so she was fabulous to work with and so on we went to Venice where she did Sleeping Beauty and it was very successful and a funny thing happened there was that the actual staff box was out front in the circle where you know the boxes are here in our own theatre so we had a box in the front and it had a microphone that you could speak backstage to the stage manager if you saw there was some lighting or something wrong so on the opening night Margot said to me when I mind you Benjamin Britten and uh, the famous composer and the famous singer Peter Pierce, his friend, would sit in the box because this production was sold out. I said, no, of course. So I moved back in the box and put them in the front. And um, so the production started. And I was at the ballet mess and she kept saying to me, Ben, and of course, every time she said Ben, Benjamin Britton would turn. And I'd say, I'm sorry, we've got the same name. So this was something. Benjamin Britton actually was such a nice man and I went with him the next morning. At seven o'clock we went to St. George to hear the monks sing. He was writing uh, some religious music and wanted some inspiration, I suppose. And he had a, a floor of one of the palaces in um, thing where he had Margot and I to dinner. So that was really very nice to get to know such a, or to get to be with such a fabulous composer and a wonderful singer as was Peter Pierce. Anyway, this continued because later going forward many years till I was directing the National Ballet in Washington DC. And it was the opening of the Kennedy Center 
and we had decided we were going to do My Sleeping Beauty, a new production, to open the Kennedy Center, and it would be the first ballet production to be seen there. So I asked Margot, and she agreed to do it. So we had Margot Fontaine doing this. So, of course, it was fabulous. She did a wonderful job, was wonderful with the company, and we went on tour with it. So we toured all over the place with The Sleeping Beauty. And, you know, when you working with someone famous, you get to meet famous people. Because we went to a West Palm Beach and um, we stayed with Douglas Fairbax Jr. and his wife, who was absolutely wonderful. So that was nice. And there was a funny situation where we had a television interview. And of course they wanted to interview Margot, not me. But anyway, the woman there um, would say, tell me, Don Margot, and, and she was Don Fontaine, she would say, and of course, instead of Dame Margot, she got Don from it. So she'd say, Don Fontaine, how long have you been doing Sleeping Beauty? Don Fontaine, with it, Don Fontaine, it became odious. And so suddenly Margot asked if I would answer one of the questions. So immediately I jumped in with, well, Dame Margot and Dame Margot, Dame, Mar Dame Margot, at least 50 times, so the woman would get the message. So then she continued with Don Margot. So after I said to Margot, how embarrassing, she said, no, she because it made me feel like Don Perignon, some expensive champagne, which I thought was funny. Anyway, so we got to tour, and she also came back when I did Cinderella, and we toured with Cinderella as well.